Can you please tell us about your background? Sure, I'd love to. So I, um, I graduated computer science major uh, from San Jose State. Um, I started my first company while I was in college. I started a company called World Gaming Federation and it was to basically pair players up online so that they could compete in tournaments for competitive games at the time. So back then it was a lot of Blizzard games, Warcraft, uh, Starcraft was just kind of coming out at the time. And I ran that for a couple years and then I got acquired by one of the largest gaming sites at the time. Um, so I joined them and worked for them. They were based out of Seattle. I worked for them for about three, four years where I helped to build the largest tournament system uh, online. And we had gaming le leagues and ladders and we supported all the classic games. So Yahoo Spades and Microsoft, they, they use our platform to pair players together online. Um, so I've been in gaming since, uh, you know, I guess 1997, 98 is when I kind of first started to get into it. Um, from there, uh, I went and worked at a very small mortgage company for a, a brief stint, and then paired up with my friend from college and started chess.com in 2006. Let us know, what do you like about playing chess? So I first learned chess as a kid. I played against my dad and my older brothers, but I didn't get the bug until I was 15 in, in high school. And I realized there was a chess club. And so I just kind of went in one day, a bunch of kids playing chess. And I started playing and I was losing all my games. Uh, and so I was like, wow, this game is fascinating. Like I, there's something about sitting across from somebody face to face on a board and just trying to outwit them and outplay them just with skill and intellect alone and there was no luck involved, there was no randomness involved, it was just your mind versus their mind. And so I quickly started buying chess books and I would read them 24 seven. I'd read them at night, I'd go on camp outs, I'd read my books, I took my books everywhere I went and I just studied chess voraciously for the next couple years and I started winning some tournaments in high school. Um, <clears throat> so I really fell in love with the game. And I think what, what really draws me to it is this ability that you're playing, um, a complete game of skill, a game of wits, and battling against somebody else one-on-one. -on -one. And if you lose, you only have yourself to blame. And if you beat the person, it's because you like outsmarted them or you, you, know, you, you defeated them. And so I just love this, this competitive nature to it. I'm a very competitive person, always have been, and chess is the ultimate competitive game to me. Tell us about chess.com, a project of yours, and the reason why you participate in creating Play Hall. Sure. So. I was chess club president in college and that's how I kind of started meeting people on my dorm floor is they found out I was chess club president and I started teaching lessons to some of the guys on the floor. One of them was Eric Olibest who would become my chess.com co-founder years later and um, he approached me in 2006. I was working at a mortgage company like I said and he basically said I would love to start a company with you and I know the guys who own chess.com. I did not want to get into the chess business because I think it's very hard to make money in that space, but he convinced me to do it anyways, and it actually ended up being a wild success. And chess.com, I think what was so easy about it was the business model was very clear. We wanted to just bring players from all over the world together to play a game that people are very passionate about. It's kind of the ultimate classic game. Nobody, um, chess never dies, it never goes away, it never, it never gets old. Um, it's been around for thousands of years and people from every country in the world play this game. And so we want to build a platform that allowed people to share, to compete and to learn this game. And so uh, it was the vision from the very, very beginning was very easy to execute on because we knew exactly what we wanted to be. And um, now we've got 20 million users, over 20 million users on the platform. Uh, from over 200 countries and we have millions of games played every day and, and uh, we have billions of games stored in our database. And so it's been a, a very interesting and fun 10 years at chess. Do this project have something in common? Yeah, so with Play Hall, they want to do something very similar, right? So Play Hall is very focused on the skill-based aspect of, of betting. They want to take games where two players play or multiple people play against each other and it's all skill based, it's intellect based, and you can wager money on that game. And this is something that people have done for hundreds of years, probably thousands of years, right? Is sit down, play a game of Go, or checkers, or backgammon, or chess, <clears throat> and, and wager it. And if you go to parks all over New York City, parks here, you'll find guys that play chess for cash. And um, I think that that's just an added, exciting, uh, added level of excitement for the game uh, to, to put your money on the line, to say, I'm gonna outwit you, 
and uh, I'm gonna win your money in the process, right? And I think that's very exciting. So in 2013, I actually started a site called Gambit, uh, which was very similar concept to, to Play Hall. Uh, we had all kinds of games of skill on the platform that allowed people to wager Bitcoin. And um, I think at the time I was just a little early. There it was not enough people back then who adopted Bitcoin yet. Uh, it was very hard to run a B2C business in 2013. Um, I was a very small team, and I think Play Hall basically is coming in at the right time uh, where there's much more adoption, there's more cryptocurrencies, uh, more people accept it now, and um, they've got a bigger team to basically tackle all the issues that I didn't really have available to me back then in 2013. And so I'm very excited about their ambitions with what I wanted to do back, back then. As a chess player, could you say how close skill gaming games are to chess in terms of intellectual content? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, there's a lot of skill-based games out there, right? And there's also a spectrum, right? So you have, you have what I would call slot machines, which is on the far end of one spectrum, which is complete luck. And then you have chess on the other end of the spectrum, which is complete skill. And then you have games in the middle. You have things like poker, which are maybe like 60% skill, 40% luck. I don't know what the exact breakdown there is, but there's some skill and some randomness in poker. And there's other games like backgammon, you have dice involved, but clearly there's a lot of skill in backgammon. The better player will win over time against a weaker player, even with the dice and the randomness there. Um, and so I think for, for, for plat, plat, platforms like Play Hall, uh, or platforms like Gambit in 2013, the key is finding the right games that are exciting and fun for the user that give everybody kind of a chance to win, but also use their intellect and their wits to, to outplay their opponent. Right? So chess is, is one form of that game, but I think there are lots of forms of, of, of skill-based intellectual games that you can, you can bet on and, and wager, wager cryptocurrency on. Is checkers game a real battle of wits? I mean, checkers is definitely a battle of skill, for sure. There's no luck in checkers. There's no dice, there's no randomness. Now, the permutations are much, much smaller than chess, and computers have solved checkers a long time ago. Uh, so, you, you know, a, a computer can play perfect checkers every single time. Chess, not so much. They're, they're getting good at it, but they're not perfect yet. Uh, so checkers is just a much more simplistic version of, of chess, in my opinion. Nevertheless, checkers are close to chess, and what about other skill? gaming games. Which of them do you find the most interesting? Um, I mean, I think for me, um, poker is, is always going to be one of my favorites. I think just because it's, it's an international game. I love, I love the game of poker. I think it's why it's got so much adoption worldwide. Um, other games I find extremely interesting are backgammon. I love, always like backgammon a lot. I actually created my own variant of backgammon called Backgammon 8s. Uh, essentially what I want to do is eliminate the computer cheating aspect with backgammon because there are computer engines out there that play it. And so I created a variant where there are different amount of chips and you use eight-sided dice instead of six-sided dice and the permutations actually blow up and they get much more complicated. And so it's a, it's a more complex version of backgammon essentially and I really enjoy that a lot. But there's, there's a lot of classic games. I mean, I like Yahoo Spades, I like all kinds of card games. Um, I've played, you know, even games like Tetris. I love games like Tetris. My own personal background is I was a StarCraft World Champion in 1998. Uh, so I was sponsored by Logitech to play uh, for a number of years. And I went to South Korea and played there for a little bit. And the, the gaming culture there is, is off the charts. Um, so I love all kinds of computer games as well, like StarCraft, uh, PUBG, League of Legends, all those games, Counter-Strike. I've played them at a pretty high level. Um, and those are all intense games of skill that at some point I think people will figure out how to monetize that and allow players to actually wager and, and, and bet cryptocurrency on even those types of games. The game of chess traditionally does not involve playing for money. Gambling and chess tournaments are totally different industries. Isn't there some conceptual contradiction in organizing smart games for real money? So the word gambling, you have to be very careful about, in my opinion. Gambling, to me, um, denotes some sort of luck involved, right? So if you're pulling a slot machine wheel, you're gambling, right? But if I sit down and I bet somebody on a game of chess, to me, that's not gambling. That's betting. And it's very different. Betting and gambling are two different things. I actually think people have been playing chess for money for a very long time. 
but it's not gambling per se. But like I said, people go to the parks and they play chess for money. It's been happening for a long time. And I have played in chess tournaments for years where I would pay money to go play in a tournament and you would play over the weekend in some big convention in Las Vegas. And the winner takes home most of the pot of the entry fees. So it's one form of wagering money or betting money. I'm betting that I'm going to win the pot at the end of the tournament. Um, so even today, there are chess tournaments for money held every weekend around the United States, around the world. So people do play chess for money, but it's not gambling. It's, it's people that are putting their, their, their wits, their skills to test, yeah. How big is the skill gaming market? So skill gaming is huge. Uh, probably the biggest player in the space right now is skills.com. I know that they've got over 10 million users. Um, I mean, if you look at chess.com alone, it's a skill-based game. You've got 20 million users on chess.com. Um, I was reading some articles earlier that there's uh, over 100 million users in the world who play poker online. Um, people have said there are 600 million plus in the world who play the game of chess, um, just in general over the board or online. Um, and then you've got the entire world of Player Unknown Battlegrounds, which is kind of the popular, most popular game to come out right now. It's a skill-based game, and there are two million simultaneous users playing that game at any given moment online. Uh, you've got League of Legends, over 100 million users. You know, there's, you could just keep dropping these num numbers and names, but basically any skill-based game, whether it be a uh, role-playing game or real-time strategy or World of Warcraft, these are all skill-based games, and they all have huge markets behind them. Uh, Hearthstone is another big one has some RNG random elements to it, but it's a very skill-based game. And Hearthstone is one, of the, is one of Blizzard's biggest hits in the last couple years. Where are all these people from? Who are, who are they? Uh, it's definitely an international crowd, for sure. Um, if, you, if you follow the League of Legends or the, or the professional player circuit, there's players from all over, from Scandinavian countries, European, Russian, South America, US. Uh, it's clear that this is an international phenomenon and is the only real limiting factor on most of the, the computer skill-based games is just access to internet, access to computers, access to technology. So some of the third world countries are coming online at a slower rate just because their infrastructure is not there. But those are the countries where you will find the more classic games, right? So if you go to Southeast Asia, you'll see that they would play a lot of Chinese chess or traditional chess or you, know, you find Go a lot in, uh, in other countries. So, Everybody has their own version of skill games. Whether or not they are digital or online is, is, depends on their infrastructure. What, it, in your opinion, what is so important in using of blockchain technology in such project as a play hall? Right, so not every business is well suited to the blockchain. Um, you have to really figure out like, what does the blockchain do that we couldn't do without it? And in this case, um, the biggest problem with skill-based gaming by far is when there is skill involved, people try to figure out a way to cheat. You can't really cheat a luck-based game. Like how can you, you, you know, you can't modify the algorithm of the, of the slot machine or the dice when you're playing craps or roulette or whatever. I mean, those are things that are very hard to cheat at. But when you talk about chess, you have engines that play much better than humans. It's very easy to cheat at chess. It's easy to cheat at backgammon. It's easy to cheat at some of these games because there are engines that do it better than humans do it. And so you have to figure out how can you spot the cheaters? How can you catch the cheaters? And that's something that chess.com actually spends a lot of time. Uh, there was an article re recently written in Chess Life that details the years that chess.com has spent trying to catch and find cheaters using algorithms. And the blockchain, I think, is well suited because what the blockchain does is it brings 100% transparency and a perfect history, a perfect record of everybody's performance. And so you can use that blockchain and that data to detect anomalies to try and figure out which cheaters are using tools to, to, to gain an unfair advantage against other players. So that's one thing that that does. Um, the blockchain also um, decentralizes things in such a way that you can um, use maybe one token or one currency to compete against all, uh, to compete across platforms on a lot of different games. So right now, if you play like a Steam game or you play a Blizzard game, they all kind of have their own different virtual currency systems. Um, and I think what people are looking for is like one token or one unit of measure that you could then take from one game to another game, regardless of who the game maker was, that blockchain would track uh, the ledger for that one token across all games. Um, so I think that's another interesting aspect of the blockchain here. So. Um, 
I think that's where Playhall is really trying to take advantage of the blockchain is through tokenization of gaming and through uh, detection of anomalies through transparency.